Welcome to the Morning Wager, where you've got the number one handicapper at Wager Talk over the last three days. That is moi. And yes, the number one handicapper over the last seven days, our good friend, Mark Zinno. Mark, certainly, now that you are number one over the last seven days at, wait, people oh. can check the leaderboard at Wager.com. You must oh. be happy. There's nothing you can complain about, oh, correct? I, I, no, there is something I can complain about. Because... The jacked up Wager Talk leaderboard. I might. I wanted to throw a shoe at you while you were talking. Okay, how in the world? How in the world am I behind a guy with three freaking losses? You see that five and zero? Oh? That's. The, I mean, just ridiculous. Oh, by the way, if you go to the baseball tab on today's leaderboard, uh, where I haven't lost a game in oh, I don't know, since the Biden administration existed, uh, I'm behind your dumbass. What in the world is that? How am I behind you? How in the world am I behind you? That is that is, that is the falsehood of all falsehoods. Your you and your quaff do not belong in front of the unde- only undefeated guy at Wager Talk over the last twelve plays. That's this guy, okay? And as somebody commented yesterday in the comment section below, for the love of all that is holy, Wager Talk, put Zeno at the top of the damn leaderboard across the board. I'm done with this. This is the dumbest leaderboard ever. I'm 5-0, and oh, you're 6-1, and one, and they had the nerve to put you in front of me because of unit size. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you what. That's not a, I got a big unit, buddy. What do you got to say? Me and Randy Johnson, the big unit. I talked to your wife. Okay? I know all about unit size. Okay, okay, okay. No. All right, cut the tape. Cut the tape. We don't want this in here. No, 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 no. All right. Anyway, um, Mark Zinno. Unreal. Uh, a 12-0 you, run. You had, what can I say? I have a big unit. Uh, anyway, uh, you uh, you are on a 12-0 and 0 run overall. Kudos to you. I'm not going to take any pot shots. I appreciate my friends. I root for my friends. And uh, you have a play that you would like to break down I, for the I fine folks. My friends. I root for my friends, too, just not to be in front of me when I'm undefeated. That's all. Okay. San Diego Padres. We've been rooting for them quite a bit. They're doing well. Uh, just swept the Pirates. Uh, they are now in Miami. This is your half of the double play. You think this money line's a little too low as uh, the Padres visit uh, Joe Ranieri's area of the country, where he's the mayor, I believe, uh, down in Miami. I mean, two things here. One, uh, Martin Perez now out of Pittsburgh and into San Diego with a much better offense and a higher scoring offense, which suits him because his ERA and whipper got awful. Uh, but in his first start in San Diego, he actually pitched pretty well. Uh, went six innings, gave up three hits, just one run, struck out seven um, at home against Colorado in a 3-2 win. So now he's out on the road again where the Padres score a lot more. But the other part of this for me is like, how much longer can Edward, don't call me Eduardo Cabrera, continue to pitch at this level? Um, which is, I say, over his last three starts, he's gone at least five innings, giving up three runs or less, including his last start out, where he shut the Braves out for five innings and only allowed three hits and struck out eight. I just don't think he's that guy, and he's finally going to run into an offense that may bite him in the backside here uh, with this hot San Diego's Padres offense on the road. So, you know, uh, I I think we have a, a good combination here of starting pitchers that I can back Um, even though the Marlins bullpen is pretty good, uh, San Diego's bullpen isn't terrible either. So, uh, but I don't want to take the bats out of the hands of the Padres because they are an offense here, especially on the road. BP, we've talked about it all year long. They can really score runs. So Mm -hmm. uh, I like here. I'm going to back the Padres with Martin Perez on the mound. And I think Edward Cabrera, uh, finally gets beaten up the way we're used to seeing him getting beaten up. If you like the Padres, like Zeno does, smash that like button. Can't imagine there's going to be a lot of support for Miami in that spot. Now, for my half of the double play. Not a lot of support I'll for me on the leaderboard either, by the way. Just letting you know. Not a lot of support I support there. you. I support you. Would you like the number one spot over the last three days? I'll give it to you if it makes you happy. Anyway, uh, I'll introduce my half of the double play like this. Oh, you want the leaderboard to say it. Well, you're number one in my heart. Anyway. When the population goes to click on wagertalk.com, they see my name at the top of it. 12 and mother freaking O. What if we just put your picture on the like a pop, big pop up of you posing when people clicked on Wager Talk? How about that? So that's certainly a different approach, but uh, there we go. Anyway, my half of the. What? Oh, Charlotte okay. My half. He is? Oh, no. He's. Uh, I'm sorry. It's Quintana. <laughs> no. That's not. Yes, I was going to say, yes, I was going to say, he's not a Cabbage Patch. No. 
All right. Yes, Joe Ranieri says he wants us to get uh, on to the next game. It is Cubs and White Sox. So you and I, uh, as we always do, spoke before the show. And I was throwing a couple poss- possibilities out for my half of the double play, just bouncing some things off you. And you said, go with the one that is on brand for you. And that is what I will do here. How are the Chicago White Sox doing, Zeno, these days? Uh, let me check. They're doing bad. There it is. Bad. Yeah, bad. They've, lost, they've, lost, they've lost 22 of 23 games. That's not good. But they have Garrett Crochet on the mound. Now, they're 0-8 in Crochet's last starts. Also not good. But here's the kicker, guys. He has not given up more than three earned runs at any of those starts. You can count on him to do his job. And I like the fact we can get the plus half a run in the first five at a pretty reasonable price of minus 135. Mark, look back at Crochet and how he's been priced, you know, as of a month or two months ago. Remember, here at home, he closed close to even money against the Astros, against the Dodgers. He's been a favorite of minus 145 or more in three of those last eight starts. The last time he went off as a Big dog at Minnesota. Uh, And guess what, though? He only gave up one run, one hit, four innings. He didn't go very long, but I I think Crochet keeps the White Sox in this one for five innings opposite Tyone, who got rocked his last time on the road. Uh, uh, We've talked about it many times. The White Sox bullpen is where dreams go to die. We want to leave them out of the equation. But Crochet for five innings, I am confident, he can keep this team even with the crosstown rivals. Managerial change on the south side, maybe a little enthusiasm in the clubhouse, uh, you know, for the weekend or something. I mean, they should be motivated uh, facing the Cubs. So White Sox plus five, plus half a run in the first five is my half of the double. I'd love if I got plus five, but that uh, I don't think is available anywhere. Probably have to lay some juice. So, all right, let us know down below what you think of our uh, double play there, Mark on the Padres, me, White Sox uh, in the first five, getting that half run. Yeah. Our best bets coming up in just a little bit. We want to see what your favorite bets are for Friday. What are you saying now, sir? Look at a graphic Ranieri put up there. He's such a jerk. A little leaderboard, well, a little podium stand, which I don't get to be the number one on. I mean, you know, I, I just don't understand. Get- You're six. You're number one, one over the last seven days. Yeah, but no, 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 no. See right there, MLB. You see? See that? Yes, I'm looking. Do I have a loss? Yes. Do I have a loss? Okay, then move me up to the top. Thank you. I don't have a loss. And of all people, uh, first of all, I'm behind a guy with four losses. Make that freaking make sense. That's okay? not my department. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just ridiculously dumb. That's number one. Number two, you should never be above me because I am a better man than you. Now that's uh, that's a cheap shot. Okay, uh, you know you've you've done things for this country that certainly matter more. Okay, you've you've served this country a lot more honorably than I have. I mean, you know, twenty years ago you were over in Iraq, and I thought I was on the moon. But that's a, that's a different podcast no, for a different law day. School. We're quitting law school. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Anyway, yes. Thank you for, for reminding me. All right. Have you commented down below already with your favorite bets for Friday? I sure hope so, because we'd love to see them. And we love the comments that are rolling in. We love to see everyone enjoying the morning wager. Mark and I, every Monday through Friday, dropping free plays. Football season is upon us, the preseason. You had a winner last night. You had a preseason winner. By the way, not only am I number one uh, in MLB the last three days, I'm number one overall. It's all MLB. But anyway, let's talk some NFL preseason here. Uh, We've got three games on the docket for today. Baltimore, always the preseason darling. Money's moved against them, Mark. Against uh, Philadelphia is now favored in Baltimore. I guess people think that the uh, that it's over. That Baltimore's you know incredible preseason run, which ended last year, uh, is you know they're due to regress a little bit. What what do you think? What jumped out to you in this three game uh, preseason slate for Friday? Because we've seen well, look, line I mean, movement in all three games. Yeah, and I was just going to say, like at this point, guys, if you see line movement, I would just follow it in the NFL preseason. Um, uh, you know, not, not just flat out across the board, but if you like a play and you see the money moving in a certain direction, do it. Uh, you can tell you there's a pretty sharp ticket discrepancy. 50% of the tickets in the Ravens Eagles game are on the over, but 91% of the money on the under, we've seen that under come down about three and a half points. Conversely in the other two games, both of them are trending over, uh, Atlanta, Miami feels like it could get over. Uh, just look at the situations here. One on the Miami side, it, it's Mike McDaniel. He'll always buck the trend, buck the system. He'll do the exact opposite. So he'll continually try to score. That's just the way he's wired. 
Uh, and not only that for Atlanta, you're not going to get any Kirk Cousins, but you are going to get a first-time head coach or first-year head coach in Raheem Morris who's going to want to win. Uh, and not only that, Michael Penix Jr. is going to want to show out for the Falcons. Uh, and I assume he's going to play an entire first half. So I think you're going to see him try to throw the ball and light it up and everything else. Um, so that over, would I would probably just, you know me, they're not scoring early, they're not scoring late, uh, especially given, you know, the downgrading players that may come in the second half. I'd probably look to the first half over uh, at 19 and a half. You get, a, you know, 10 points each, 10, 10 and a half is get your home as a winner if you'd like to go in that direction. But uh, Houston and Pittsburgh don't really have a, a good feel on per se, but um, you know I don't think we're going to see many quality starters. I, I, you know what no. the problem is with Houston and Pittsburgh, uh, with Pittsburgh at least BP is that how much Russell Wilson do we get? And how much Justin Fields do we get? And how much does it matter? Like they're mm-hmm. in a, they're in a huge quarterback competition. I'd stay away from Pittsburgh in the preseason until they name a starter. But Houston's gotten its feet wet. Remember they were in the Hall of Fame game too. That's something yeah. to consider. Um, okay. Just to put Hall a few numbers. Yeah, yeah, the Hall of Fame game that did not finish. Uh, I, the, I had the Bears in that game. They were winning, and I, I had to take a no action, obviously, because because it didn't go 55 minutes. Just to put some numbers uh, to this Ravens-Eagles matchup, the Ravens, on Harbaugh's 44-14 and 14 straight up, 40-18 and 18 against the spread in the preseason. Nick Sirianni has just... Forever. He has just one straight-up win in nine preseason games, and, cut, and he's 2-7 and seven ATS. So, it, something... <laughs> Something stinks with that line move, with the money pouring in on the Eagles in Baltimore. Grimace has made an appearance. Uh, I don't know if he has something to do with this line move, if he's betting the Eagles or what, but uh, I that line move really catches my eye. Let us know your favorite preseason picks down below, how you're approaching the NFL preseason. Let us know your favorite win totals. Just Honestly, you can comment with anything. We don't care. Uh, we love to see the feedback. Now, let's You know what I love? Somebody commented what? yesterday, I love it when Joe lets them go off on tangents. I appreciate it. I don't think Joe does, but I appreciated that comment. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm about ready to get hit in the face with the, face with the baseball. Oh, there oh, there we go. All right. Wow, that not, not the response I was getting. Yes, okay. That's yes, good. yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, a play that Joe said, oh, you're going with this team, huh, before the show. Yes, we are, Joe. We are going with the L.A. Dodgers in the first five Dodgers. Uh Oh. There we go. Oh, my God. Uh, the Dodgers, God, Joe, just love that. But we're going with the Dodgers in the first five, laying half a run against the Pirates. Mark, I think the Pirates have to be demoralized after the series against San Diego. They blew a lot of leads. Meanwhile, the Dodgers were off yesterday, and their big uh, trade acquisition at the deadline, Jack Flaherty, will be on the mound. So all signs, I think, point to a strong start to this game uh, for the home team in Chavez Ravine. Yeah, and Flaherty was excellent his first time out um, where he went six innings, gave up five hits, no runs, seven strikeouts against the A's. Guess what? Uh, this Pirates lineup is probably maybe a little bit worse than the A's lineup. So Flaherty, I don't think he's going to have any problems really. I don't mind fading Mitch Keller, uh, a guy who, uh, as BP would say, his expected ERA is uh, much bigger than his regular ERA. Uh, but nonetheless, I don't have a problem fading don't Mitch sound Keller. Like that. Uh, I, I understand that. but and, and look, for a guy in Keller who's given up two runs or less, in five consecutive starts, feels like a good spot for a blow-up start for this guy. Uh, I have no problem, again, uh, fading Mitch Keller. The Dodgers lineup is good enough to get to him, and, and uh, I can, with fair amount of, uh, of certainty, feel confident that the Dodgers at home, despite the fact that they haven't been scoring a ton of runs as of late, um, will get to Mitch Keller early enough here. Uh, but Flaherty should de- do most of the heavy lifting, and uh, if you're taking my advice, you'd be at the top of that leaderboard, too. If you're listening to BP, you should be in second. <laughs> number one the last three days over here number one he's number one the last seven days we're both number one you know they say both two people can't be number one wrong oh, right. and, and i believe he's number one for the season let you know maybe we should have a guest appearance from tokyo brandon on the show mark Zimmerman. it just hats everywhere right here i can't wear a hat i have too much hair uh as you were talking mark zitto the wager talk Dude. live on screen popped as the L.A. money came in on the Dodgers, as you were speaking, uh, their price turned to red. I was looking at it. So uh, the people, I think, are with us believing in the Dodgers in that one. That is your show best bet. First five, laying half a run. Let us know what you think of that down in the comment section below. And if you have not already subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, how fun is this show? Why would you not want to subscribe just for this show? Exactly. By some miracle, if I'm still undefeated by Monday, which would be quite miraculous. Um, 
and I am not on the top of the leaderboard. It will be the, my last show at Wager Talk. No. Ever. No. If I am undefeated no, through the weekend, if I'm undefeated <laughs> through the weekend, Monday will be my last show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The record is skip, man. I don't think we're going Either way, okay? Uh, yeah. Oh, now the record's playing. Number one with a play. I mean, you could have parlayed all my plays the last 12 days. You wouldn't be a rich man. Parlayed one of yours, you'd be a loser. Feeling good, it's fair to say. Why don't you just tell me what plays you'd like to parlay? There he is. There he is. Here I am. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> I can't over there. I, I number one. Number one. We're all number one. It's the number one show on Wager Talk. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.